Good morning, everyone. Merry, merry, merry Christmas. Thank you, worship team. You guys have got a bit of work to do out there when it comes to... Okay, we'll try it again. Morning, everyone. Merry Christmas. Ah, oh, fantastic. Good job. Merry Christmas. A very warm welcome to everyone that's joining us this Christmas morning, um, especially for those who are watching us online. It's so good to have you with us online. Merry Christmas to you and to your families. Uh, we have an exciting time uh, today. Um, it's going to involve the kids, it's going to involve the middle school people, it's going to involve the youth, and it's going to invo even involve the adults. So we're excited about that. Merry, Merry Christmas. Uh, I know, again, it's tempting for you to, um, those who are watching online, to sit and have a cappuccino and a dip a oma and all the rest of it uh, doing worship. But please, can I ask you, uh, if you're online for today, and that just to stand wherever you are and join us in the time of worship. And those obviously here in the sanctuary, please stand. Let us worship together. Like some Christmas drama. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah. 
afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Warm welcome, church, to everyone that is joining us for today's service. Greetings to everyone that is here in the sanctuary, but also to everyone else that is joining us online. One of the beautiful traits that we have as South Africans, I suppose I say as Africans, is that we know how to laugh in the midst of chaos. We know how to laugh regardless of what is happening around us. And I can imagine that for some of us, we never imagined Christmas like this. We never imagined a Christmas where we cannot hug people, a Christmas where we cannot embrace those around us as we truly like to. And so just for a moment, I just want to encourage everyone, obviously without touching each other, but really just to kind of look at each other, give each other Bluetooth high fives, say Merry Christmas to the people around you. Because honestly speaking, that's the spirit. And for all the BTTs born before technology, Bluetooth, I mean, social distance high five. Please go for it. <laughs> a Merry Christmas to everyone. And so as we continue in worship, one of the beauties of Christmas is about people gathering around the birth of Jesus. Shepherds gather, angels gather, and as some choose to retell the story, wise men gather. And so we too have that special privilege as we gather. And so as we do that, as we turn our heads and our hearts towards the birth of Jesus, could I ask you to please join me in prayer? And so loving God, we thank you for the mystery of Christmas. We thank you for the joy of Christmas. That you chose to come in the form of a baby you left you could have been born in a palace but you chose God to be born in our margins so that we can also remember that in seasons like this when it feels like we are just going through the most as humanity that you were still born among us you are not only born in the happy moments of our lives but even in these seasons God you were born among us. Amen. And so may we turn our hearts and our heads to that reality and be alive moving forward from today with a great sense of hope. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We will now continue in worship through song.
Oh, Kamali faithful. Oh, Kamali. Oh, Kamali faithful. Oh, Kamali. Oh, Kamali faithful. Oh, Kamali. Oh, Kamali together.
Ukuthe hovu ya busa. Nana mtlanjo sa hili slalu nsako so kukos. You're a great God. No one compares to you. Lord, we are mindful as we meet this morning that it has been a tough year. Some of us have lost loved ones and we're dealing with our first Christmas with them not being here. Some of us were affected by losing our jobs because of COVID-19. Like like Clonie explained, that it is difficult to be meeting loved ones and not being able to hug and not being able to celebrate the way we're used to. But we're reminded that you are still God and you reign and you are seated on your throne. Ongungulungulo na mandla who's capable of winning this in Tanzania. Si akdumi sana sekseni. Na sekseni si tisoku kanga nia os para misi kamalako. Na sekseni si titemba le tu lugu e Jehova. Ongumkali nompeli swe mpilozetu. So King of Kings, we worship you this morning because you are our hope and you are our strength. We know that we will more than be okay because you are still seated on your throne. You still reign and you still rule. We thank you for giving us Christ. We thank you for giving us this unshakable hope. And we bless your name, O oh God. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.
you guys. Just our voices. Come on. And so, Lord, we ask that you let your light shine in our lives right now. It has been a year of mystery. It has been a year, God, where we've literally went into the unknown. And even today, spending our first Christmas, God, not knowing what we can do as responsible citizens and what we can't do, God, without any certainty around how we celebrate Christmas, given the environment and the atmosphere we find ourselves in, There's a sense, God, in which it is somewhat of a foreshadow of our lives going forward, journeying into an unknown space. And what we truly rely on, God, right now is your light to guide us, your star of wonder. We don't know where we're going, but we're just going to follow, God, and we are going to follow in faith. And so we pray, God, that you encourage and strengthen us as we journey. And so, Holy Spirit, here we are. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Please be seated. Amen. Okay, friends, um, I'm just going to, in a moment, hand over to Tracy, who's a society student. She's going to uh, pray for the offering. I just want to just say one thing about the offering and some notices. Um, but before I do that, um, as you know, the new COVID regulations only allow us to have 100 people um, in church. And um, so we're grateful for the online viewers, and we're grateful that you are here. But I'm wondering if I can ask you a small favor, if you don't mind, for those that are here in the sanctuary. Um, you, you are so far spread for 100. We've got a whole lot of seats, like, right here uh, that are available. Um, so can I ask you if you, while Tracy's praying, so you don't have to, anyone can see you moving. Um, and, and if you, they are still COVID-friendly, so... Uh, if you're comfortable with coming, either moving forward or moving here, it just makes it a little bit more consecrated. I mean, concentrated, not consecrated, uh, although it is holier in the middle. Um, so if you want to, while Tracy's praying, either move forward in that, but just can you come here and sit at my feet? That'll be brilliant. Uh, <laughs> that's the first thing. Uh, secondly, to say... Um, uh, secondly, to say that we have, just to give you the notices, uh, uh, Christmas Day, 27th on Sunday, I'll be preaching, um, and there's only one service at 8.15, one service at 8.15, then on the 3rd of, um, on the 3rd of January, Paul Varane is preaching, uh, also one service, 8.15 with communion, and then we go back to our 8.15 and 10, Samilo is preaching on the 10th, uh, then we're 8.15 and 10. A.M. So we're from the 10th of January, picking up with two services again. So next Sunday, only 8.15, the 3rd of January with communion, 8.15. Um, and I think that's about all the notices. Am I right? Good. Tracy's going to pray uh, for the offering. A reminder about the offering now, if you could really be uh, generous. Our, our offering um, on a Christmas day always goes to, to the youth, to children, um, and far and wide. So the local churches don't keep any of the money for themselves. What every single bit that comes in goes immediately to children's homes and to children's work, uh, traditional Christmas Day. Uh, and obviously because um, we're able to give here, but also able to give online, uh, just to please can ask you be, to be generous so that we can make sure that we're generous towards the children amongst us. Tracy's going to pray. While she's praying, we're having a massive move taking place. No. Oh. Okay, I'll tell you what, can you pray, just keep a silent prayer for like two minutes, give everyone a chance to move and then start praying. Is that okay? Good job. Pray that people move. <laughs> Morning, church. Okay, anybody moving? I'm closing my eyes now. Everyone close your eyes now. So that people can move. Don't know why we have to close our eyes for people to move. Never mind. Father God, thank you so much that we can come together on Christmas Day. Thank you that we can celebrate your birth and remember that you took on such a humble form when you came to earth as a child. Thank you, Father God, that through this offering we can give to children who really don't have as much as we do. 
children who maybe if they're lucky got one small gift today, maybe their food today was just food. And Father, we really pray that you'll help us to open our hearts and to be generous. And thank you, Father God, for the generosity of each person here and watching online. Thank you for the way you've worked in their lives. Thank you for the way you'll continue to work in their lives into the new year. And we just pray, Father God, that you'll go with us today as we celebrate your birth and remember the real reason for Christmas. We pray this in your name. Amen. Much better. Uh, can I just say that those who just want you to raise your hands, those that moved? Raise your hands. Okay. Feel free to go back to uh, Leon and you can you get your offering back again. Is that okay? Just reach in and just make sure you only take out what you put in. Is that okay? Good. Okay. Fantastic. So today we have, uh, we're going to be speaking about the this good news of joy. Now, it would be, seem crazy that anyone would preach about joy after the year we've had. But don't forget that just by definition, the definition of joy, and those who, who have been part of Grace Point for a while understand and have heard this before, there's a big difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is what? Happiness depends, our happiness depends on what happens around us. So when everything's A-OK -okay and everything's going up and to the right, we're happy because the things that are happening around us make us happy. But the minute the things that are happening around us aren't okay or uh, are um, down and to the left, well then it affects our happiness. The thing about joy, joy is not dependent on what is happening around us. It's an important Christian understanding that comes by the way of the Holy Spirit and it comes across as a fruit. In other words, something that when you walk in line with Christ, you have a, a byproduct that of being filled with the Holy Spirit and having a fruit of joy in your life. That is why even after a really hard and difficult year like 2020, those who are walking in the light can still have joy because our joy is not dependent on what's happening around us. And so for us to be able to understand and speak about, about joy and the good news of joy, because as they read in the beginning from the scriptures from Luke, that you see um, we are brought great tidings and joy because of the birth of, of our Savior. Now, uh, I'm going to need a bit of involvement in this. Um, for those who are online, you'll sort of get an idea of what's happening. Um, firstly, what I need, and I'm going to, oh, because I want to speak a bit about joy and this 
Um, <laughs> when you're here, I'm saying there's like six things I want to speak about. You're freaking out. You can already see that turkey burning, can't you? Okay, but it'll be done sooner than you think. Okay, so now I just need those numbers. Okay, there you go. Okay, yeah. Right, now, what I'm going to ask Leon and who else is here? Ilsa, okay, and Cloni. Um, can you just take one, 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 okay. Now you need to walk together, okay, and I need you to, I need some help in that from some, some people, number one. Okay, you guys, yeah, follow me, You're a bit too slow, all three of you. One, two, and three, okay, give her one, two, and three. All right, let me just have a look and see. Oh, yes. Quickly, you guys are very slow for youth workers. One, two, and three. Very slow. Can't see much happening here. One, two, and three. Okay. I'm looking for another kid. There. Oh, fantastic. Good luck in following me, Dean. Okay. You said, kid, you thought I was talking about you guys then. Okay, here at the back, one, two, and three. There you go. All right. Can you help us? Thanks, bro. How many have we got left? Okay, one, two, and three. Where's a granny? Oh, no, I better be careful not to. That's a granny. And another granny. A great granny. Granny, will you hold on to those? All of them. Will you help great gran? Okay, fantastic. We are an age-inclusive church. Oh, I'm sorry. Come to the second service. I'll have you doing it. Okay, cool. Okay, good. Okay, right. Now, what I need you to do, those that have got the numbers, I need you to please help me, rate me, okay? If I wasn't a pastor, I'd be a stand-up comedian, okay? So I thought what I'd do is that I would interweave the six points, with some such funny jokes you've never heard before. Now, those that have got the numbers, when I tell the joke, number three is so funny you feel like you're going to fall off the chair, okay? Number two is, that's like a dad joke, okay? That's like medium. Number one is that if you weren't in church, you would boo me. But because you're in church, you're never going to do that, am I right? Okay, good job. Are you ready? Let's give it a taster before I start speaking about joy. This is the first one. And no other comments from the peanut gallery. Is that okay? Are you ready? Okay. I wrote them down somewhere. Yeah. Okay, this is the first one. <laughs> I'm really laughing at them. They're so funny. Okay. Ready? Who delivers... Presents to baby sharks at Christmas. Santa Jaws. One. What is that? Two. Another. One. Seriously. Two. One. Two. Is there not one three? Oh, my word. Okay. It'll get better. Okay. So... Trust me, it'll get better. All right, now, when it comes to joy, were we able to look back at this year? I'm going to get a three. I'm telling you, before the service ends. When it comes to, to joy, and when it comes to this year, as I said, it's hard to imagine that there's things that we can be joyful about. But there are a lot of things we learned about ourselves. And if you take a moment to think about your faith, or wondering for yourself what your faith looked like this year, because this time last year, we had no idea what we would be experiencing in 2020. So how did your New Year's resolutions go for 2020? Right? Everything changed in 2020. Okay, right. But there's some important things we're going to learn. And I'm going to speak about the joy and what to get, we can get out of it. All right, number one. I'm going to speak about the joy. Wait, let's go. Bring it up. Okay. This was a spa um, in, in the Western Cape. Now, what happened with the spa is that in the, in the beginning of the 
uh, in the beginning of the, of the pandemic, a lot of shops were closing down, as you know. Now, do you know what this spa did? They went and they had a look at the shopping center. It was like, a, a, it was like one of those, not a mall, but it was like more of a shopping center. And they saw that there was a fast food place uh, there was a stationary shop, and there was one or two, uh, and whatever other shop there was in the same shopping center as theirs, they removed those items from their store, the spa. I'm, I'm not getting money from the spa, by the way, as an endorsement. So what they did is this, is that they cleared, for example, I'll give you two examples. There was a stationary shop on the left-hand side, and there was a hamburger joint on the right-hand side. So what they did is they took out all their, their, their patties, their hamburger patties, chicken and beef patties, and they, re, they removed it from their shelves, and they removed all the stationery from their shelves. Why did they do that? Why? Because they wanted to make sure that when people came to that shopping center, they knew that they would be making enough money because they'd be able to stay open, etc., etc. But they knew that the hamburger joint and the stationery joint would suffer. So they, gave, they took away people's options of going to the spa to buy that stuff and made sure that people went to the hamburger joint and the stationery stuff. Isn't that amazing? The joy of being a neighbor the joy of being a neighbor. So this guy was new in town. And after he'd spent sort of six or seven months there, someone came up to him and they said to him, tell me, are you a Christian? And he responded to the guy and said to him, in order for me to answer that, or for you to receive the answer, you need to go and ask my neighbor. Now, I'm wondering if I came to your house or to your house and I asked your neighbor whether you were a Christian. So tell me, tell me, Sipo, are your neighbors Christians? I wonder what they would say about you. Or I'm wondering if you came to my neighbors. I'm not telling you where I stay, so you can't. If I, if I came to you, if you came to my neighbors, I'm wondering if they would say to you, I'm a Christian. Now, Jesus was big into the neighbor thing. This, the, the, the birth of Jesus was big when it comes to understanding neighbors. Do you notice his neighbors even at the birth, the people that came around to his place were so different and so varied. And Jesus said, you need to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then the Pharisees said, got all smart and said, well, who's your neighbor? And what story did he tell? The story of the good Samaritan. If you want to understand who your neighbor is. And Jesus says, go and do likewise. Now, let me tell you something, friends. I don't know if, if you have got any idea. This, I, I was saying this to, to my family last night. I said, let me tell you something. I'm going into 2021 with the lowest expectations ever. Like my expectations for 2021 are down here somewhere because I don't want to be disappointed like I was this year. But what I'm going to do to be able to lift my expectations of a 2021 is I'm going to make sure that I'm going to seek joy in 2021. And part of finding joy is obviously a relationship with God, and, but part of it is loving your neighbor. And just as you had a sense of this good news of joy because of the supermarket, you and I have the power and the ability by God, through God, to be able to be better neighbors. And by the way, I'm not just talking about the person who lives in 20B or in 27C. I'm talking about your neighbor who lives for us in an informal settlement just up the road. I'm talking about your neighbor who's in a, in a, in a, in a um, children's home. I'm talking about your neighbor that's in hospital. Your neighbor. The joy of being a good neighbor. Okay, number two. But before we do that, I've got to improve. Okay, are you guys ready with your numbers? Are you sure? 
Okay, please be nice to me. Okay, right, that was a weak joke. I'm not doing that joke ever again. Okay. Wait, hold on. Something's happened. <clears throat> okay. Oh my word, even my phone thought that joke was a bad joke. Don't worry, this is, this is uh, a new way of doing church. Paul, when, when you were like, doing church and that, when you were active in ministry, when you, I mean, I know you're retired and you're still active. Um, forget it. You're not going to talk to me if I finish this one. Okay. All right. Here comes the next one. <laughs> All right. What do you get if you cross Santa with a duck? A Christmas quacker. Three, I got a three. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Two. You're not, oh, you're a hard audience. Two, two. Granny, three. Thank you, Granny. Two, another three. Awesome. Have I missed anyone? That was two threes. Stick, stick with me. Okay, next one. The joy of neighbors. <laughs> All right. NJ, at first I thought that was you, hey? I've got to be honest with you. I thought, man, this, this looks like NJ. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, seriously, I spoke about Sipo. Uh, this was uh, Sipo um, and Lovu. Um, now, what happens is he worked, <laughs> he worked in the store in Umtlanga, all right, and uh, a clothing store. And this family, this Afrikaans farming family, moved from the northwest where they had a farm, uh, uh, some whatever farm you farm, and they came to his store and they could hardly speak English, like literally. I mean, I think that the farm, the guy came in and he, his, I'm not joking, his name was Chris van der Merwe. And he came in and he said, I can like to have a jean pant. And Sibyl was helping him, all right? And he tried his best, and he said that he was speaking, and he was like going to do the best sale ever, because he could see they were out of their waters, the new town, that had only been in town for a very short while, they were confused, they didn't know where to go, they knew absolutely nothing. All right, he, did, he writes in the article, he says he did his best. He said he called the guy Wim, and he called the lady Tani, and he gave them the best service ever. He said it was clear that they'd grown up in the midst of real racial tension. And that Chris didn't know exactly what to do with Sipo, who was doing so, being so unbelievably kind and serving. And he could see that obviously that Sipo was trying his best to accommodate them because they couldn't speak English by taking out his very broken English, um, Afrikaans. And the best he could do was like woman Tani, and the rest was hand gestures. So, uh, woman Tani left the store. Their daughter runs back. She could speak a bit of English. Runs back in after they've gone and said something to the effect that my mom and dad would like to invite you to a braai on Friday night. And Sipo then dressed like that, like a farmer. And he arrived at woman Tani's house on Friday for a braai. Dressed like that. He didn't know that his post was going to go viral. But it went, it got hit like a hundred thousand hits of the story of him wanting to break through barriers. The joy of breaking through barriers. The very essence of Jesus Christ, the very essence of Jesus Christ was that he broke through barriers. He broke through religious barriers. He broke through cultural barriers. He broke through traditional barriers. You name it, you give me a barrier. He broke through sexist barriers. You give me a barrier and Jesus Christ broke through those barriers. I mean, for example, just again, taking back to his worth, 
to his birth, the essence of where he was, the essence of the manger, the essence of the three kings. I mean, you have kings and shepherds. I mean, talking about breaking through a class barrier. And I want to say this to you, friends. If you're, as a Christ follower, if the people that you hang around only look like you and speak like you, you are missing out on something that is God's greatest gift because the essence of the birth of Jesus Christ was breaking through barriers. He had kings and he had smelly shepherds. Come and see him. Now I want you to cast your mind forward to Christmas lunch. Who's all having a Christmas lunch? Put up your hand. Okay. I just want to see who isn't having a Christmas lunch because I'm going to invite you to someone else's house. Are you looking for a Christmas lunch? You're covered. Okay. You guys covered? Covered. Good. Now I want you to, all of us, just please take a moment and think about your Christmas lunch. Am I only on point two? I'm not worried. I'm running out of time. Okay. I might have to give the jokes a uh, miss. Is that okay? No. <laughs> no, exa- thank you. Okay. I want you to put your mind forward to your Christmas lunch right now. Please imagine it quickly in your mind. Those watching online and those who are sitting here, think about your Christmas lunch. Now, if your Christmas lunch is going to be people around the table that look like you and speak like you and dress like you and all the rest of it. Please can you and I somehow make a commitment today. That's the last time we're going to, and this is a huge stretch, I get it, but just hear me, I have to push the envelope today. That this is the last time you meet with people that will only look like you, speak like you, pray like you, think like you. And you know what? It takes an effort. Do you know what effort he had to go through to go and find clothes like that in Umslanga? I don't think it's possible to find clothes like that in Umslanga, to be honest with you. But he did. He made an effort as did the little girl who ran back to call him. Now, that was a far stretch, I get that. But can I ask you please to be conscientious and if you want to understand true joy, hang around people that are different to you. And you know what that means? That means literally, if if you're here and you are white, you've got to make an intention to mix with other races. If, you, if you're black and you only hang out with it, make an intention. To run it. If you are straight, sit around the table with someone who is gay. <gasps> Another 20 people leave the church. You know? sit, sit around the table with someone who is gay. Because if you really want to understand how someone thinks, sit around the table with someone who's different to you. Now, we learned this in our band of brothers group. You see, at first we were a bunch of white guys. And you can speak about stuff from a white context. But you sit down with people that are different to you from a race perspective, all of a sudden you see things completely different. Not wrong, not right, but just different. And I want to tell you something. If you want to experience joy, break through barriers. Rich, poor. I want, I want to be really be radical now because I need to really wrap up. There is something ironical, don't you think, of Christians sitting around a table celebrating the birth of Jesus. And having everyone look like ourselves. So I'm wondering now, this is the the question, if Jesus sat at our table, 
if he was invited to our table to lunch today, would he be happy with your crowd? A hint would might be, if you don't have a homeless person or a very, very poor person sitting around your table at lunch, he might not be okay. I'm not talking about taking some of your lunch and dropping off with the security guard at your complex. Just think about it. All I'm asking is to think about it. Okay. One more joke and then one more point because we're seriously running out of time. Um, okay, guys, are you ready? I'm impressed with the um, kids with the... Oh, you see. That's wrong. I'm incredibly impressed about the threes that I got last time. This is going to be really good. Okay, are you ready? All right. <laughs> um, why was the snowman looking through the carrots? Why was the snowman looking through the carrots? He was picking his nose. One, you're joking. One. I thought that was one of my best. No pressure. Come on, give it to me. Give it to me. Three, yes. <laughs> Granny. Oh, one. 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 You've not gone over two once, Anna. Seriously. <laughs> a tough crowd, man. Okay. All right. Next one. Um, I, I, I need to just, I've literally got four minutes. I, need, I, I want to do two more. Just, and these will be quick. Okay. Just pause it there. Okay. So. Um, Haas is a, uh, not a bunny, Haas is a Formula One racer, okay, and he, um, just take it back to where we said, yeah, thank you, Haas is a Formula One ra racer, about a month ago, I think it was, he's racing, and the race just gets started, thank goodness, all right, Formula One fast cars, check out what happens here in, this, in November, go for it. I love tennis exactly. holding the wheels on. Uh, he, Roman went with the front of the chassis underneath the barriers. Yeah, extraordinary. Well, the halo saved his life. Uh, uh, he, he's gone to the hospital no. now for the checkups and x rays and things like this, but he has just taken back bones, again for just before he, the accident. He's on his way to hospital, and I don't know said. more of it. I, I again. Didn't. And a big fire there as they this exited one. out of turn three. And that looks very nasty indeed. Call. And unsurprisingly, Man. that is a red Stop. flag. Pause it. Pause it. Now, okay. this is after turn. Now, uh, the guy that's on the left-hand side is a guy called Fun another Funameva. He's a doctor. And he drives a safety car. And he, the, 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 the car bursts into flames. Haas is stuck in the car. And Funameva is the first person to get to him and to pull him out. Isn't that amazing? To pull him out of his car and he literally saves Haas's life. The joy of helping others, even if it costs you. The joy of helping others, even if it costs you. Is it true is it true or is it just a rumor that, um, that it's better to give than receive? Is that true? Is it true that when you give something, an endorphin in you is released that brings pleasure? Psychologically, they tell me, and I checked with Dr. Google, it's true. Psychologically, when you give someone something, it releases an endorphin in you that brings about not happiness but joy. Not happiness, but joy. Now, ultimately, Jesus was born in a cradle, but it ended in a cross. He was born in a cradle, but it ended with a cross. And his very essence of was not just pulling someone from a burning car, was to die on the cross. Now, what happens when we are sometimes caught in very difficult circumstances like COVID-19, what is the one thing that we want to do immediately? We want to protect ourselves. It's interesting because in some ways, a pandemic can release goodness, but we are always faced, every one of us that are human, and we're faced with self-protection, with holding onto things because we don't know what's going to happen next. 
And all I'm asking, if you want to understand 2020 and joy, put yourself at the risk of helping others. Maybe one of your non-resolutions is this. Is a commitment to be extravagant. To be extravagant to the poor, to be extravagant to our neighbors, to be extravagant in our greetings, in our love, in our forgiveness, in our everything that we are, that we can be extravagant, even if it takes us into the pit of a fire. We will be extravagant, and most of all, we will be extravagant with ourselves. With ourselves. Okay, this is the last one that I have to wrap up. All right. Um, can you take us to Ndlovu? So the Ndlovu Youth Choir, you remember them? So here, the Ndlovo Youth Choir, on the 1st of December, were asked to sing in collaboration with Pink. I mean, to share stage with Pink. Now, for some of you old people, Pink is a singer and a superstar and might not be on your playlist. But here we have the Ndlovo Youth Choir on the 1st of December, 2020, singing with Pink. Now, let me tell you something about joy, and let me tell you something about 2021, and even although, you remember, I started off saying my expectations are way down low, and I left this part of my sermon unwritten, because I wanted to see if there's any way I could go for my expectations being very low, which most of you nodded your heads, to whether I can actually dream big. There's no joy in having low expectations. There's no joy in having our expectations done yet. There's no joy in being beaten by 2020. There's no joy in being beaten by this thing. But can we dream? Now, if you go to John's revelation and he speaks about the birth and he speaks about the Savior that was born, he speaks in a dream, visionary fashion. He sees a new heaven and a new earth. He sees God with his creation. He, see, he, he, he has the most beautiful revelation we could ever think of, where ultimately God brings salvation to the world. The gift of joy, finally, has got to be the joy to dream. Because with Christ, all things are possible. What is your dream? I hope your dream is not for a new car. I hope your dream is not for a new house. I hope that your dream is not. Have that anyway. But dream bigger. Because. Why? Because of Jesus. He gives us the ability to live beyond where we are. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you so much that we can be here today. That you have got us through this year. We look forward to a year of dreaming, a year of joy a year in which you take us beyond the reality only to bring us to a place of incredible visions of a better South Africa, of a better Africa. And then to bring us back to the reality, invigorated, excited, committed to bringing about real change. Thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ.
Friends, um, Elsa's going to be doing the final blessing. Can you stand? Hannah, do you want to come up to the front for me, darling? Bring your numbers with you. Come and stand right here. This is Hannah, everyone. Say hi to Hannah. Very precious. Um, ho, ho, ho. Um, do you know if you play... <laughs> forget it. Okay, I was going to tell you another joke. Okay, so you, you were very hard on me today, giving me a one and maybe a two. So I've saved the best for last. Give me a rating for my sermon. Yay! <laughs> oh, COVID. <laughs> it's not even... Okay, you also do the blessing. And so as we go out today, we we'll read a uh, Christmas blessing together. Let us go from this place, proclaiming that we have seen the glory of God, believing that there is a light that shines in the darkness, which the darkness shall not overcome. And may the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, and the peace of the Christ child be with you this Christmas and evermore. Amen. Bless you all. Have a wonderful Christmas time, and we will see you sometime again soon.